Hello, hello, hello. Can anyone hear me? Ah, there we go. Ah, now I can hear myself. That's that's very strange. My headset was on. My microphone was switched on, but for some reason it wasn't connected properly. So I've disconnected, reconnected. Should be good now. Ah, apologies for the very quiet start there then. <laughs> How you doing, Mr. Water? How you doing, Victor? Good to see you. Uh, we are just putting in the last two projects that we can get done research-wise before we run out of cost cap. So uh, I've done the front wing. Let's get the chassis done. Uh, let's boost the drag reduction a bit. And we'll boost the engine cooling a little bit on this one as well. Drop the airflow down a touch more. There we go. And just the one engineer. And there we go. That is it for research for the rest of this season. We are now out of money in the cost cap. Uh, so we're going to get fines because we've still got two months till the end of the year. Uh, but that's fine. We've got 42 and a half million in the bank. And that's not going to be an issue whatsoever. Let's uh, replace the broken parts in the cars. There we go. And... Oh, wow. A lot of broken parts here. Okay. Back to our inbox. So, as I said at the start, which nobody heard because my mic wasn't working properly, uh, we are gambling on success tonight. We are going for a last to first challenge. Uh, we're going to do practice as normal, get the car set up as best we can, and then we'll just sit out qualifying and see if we can fight our way back through to the front at the end of the race. Uh, see how many positions we can gain. We'll do a, a sponsorship uh, position gain target uh, goal as well. Uh, done the car inspection, board confidence check-in. We know the board are over the moon with us. Uh, let's see how our drivers updated themselves over the previous month. Uh, a point in braking and two points in cornering Roscoe. No wonder his pace has been so strong recently. Look at that now. He's got uh, three very, very crucial stats there in the 90s. Then adaptability at 93. His reactions are at 90. The only weakness in his game is his overtaking uh, and his smoothness. And that's not too bad at all. Uh, Mick, his defending's boosted. His uh, cornering's pretty good. His braking's excellent. Yeah, he's developed quite well. What about Ollie? Ollie gained two points in accuracy, which is going to make him even better as well. Uh, this is fantastic stuff. Uh, yeah, we know about the cost cap warning. Know about that. Uh, let's do our pick crew. So, let's have a look. What is our current fatigue level? Very high. So, we'll give them Monday off. Let's go car building and gym training. I'm actually going to give them two days off. Uh, we'll go with a little bit more car building and then we'll do a day of pick stop drills at the end of the month at the end of the week there we go and then we'll do a day of training here excellent stuff and then uh, we will go car building and gym training. Again, this is now just more for uh, making sure that the pit crew doesn't fall off a cliff uh, once we're gone. I'm trying to give them a bit of balance. Make sure that they're still uh, capable. And, uh, and well-rounded, which is why we're putting in extra car building. Because that is definitely the weakest area of their game. Uh, there we go. So that is November's training planned in.
Hmm. Let's advance some time. Yes, 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 I know. Spare chassis. Good stuff. So we now have one spare chassis. Which is good because I don't have any money left to make any more parts. Uh, do I want to increase the construction speed of the wind tunnel? Uh, we got the money. Might as well. Boardroom is refurbed. Let's check our other facilities. There is the helipad wearing out. Let's refurbish that in time for the final race of the season. Uh, staff facilities. Yes, that has now gone. I have a feeling it would have done. Team hub's got to be very close. Probably break after the Grand Prix. And everything in here. Ugh, that still hasn't ticked over yet. Look, it's getting close. Factory's in decent condition. Uh, right. Let's get forward one more day. And we are ready. So, how good is our car going into Vegas? Let's check. Are they both on the same spec? C5, FW4, RW3, SP3, and UF4, SP, uh, S3. Yes, they are on the same spec. So, our car looks like that. Uh, excellent acceleration. Excellent DRS. Very strong top speed. Crucial. All of those for, uh, for this circuit. Uh, a low speed isn't amazing, but it's not horrendous at eighth. Uh, very good in the medium and the high speed. Uh, I can't actually remember what the cornering is like at this circuit. There's not a lot of it. Oh, there are some high speed corners in there. We will be excellent at those. There's some medium corners early and the end of the lap as well. There's only a couple of low speed corners and our acceleration should counter the fact that we're not amazing. Uh, in the uh, in the low speed, so I'm actually really positive about our uh, chances of cutting through and hopefully getting onto the podium, or if not, even challenging for the win. Uh, we'll see what we can do. Uh, we are not going to set any qualifying targets because we are not qualifying. Uh, we are going to go for the fastest lap. We're going to guarantee two in the top ten. Finish position streak. Uh, we got one car in the top six to complete that streak. That's cool. Not going to do a, uh, a quali. Well, we can't actually put in. Now we could put in a quali streak, but again, we're not qualifying tonight, so we would fail it automatically. Uh, so that's it. That's it for our guarantees, and uh, let's head to Vegas. Welcome to the Silver State of Nevada for the Las Vegas Grand Prix. The track here is a high-speed street circuit that takes in the lights and the sights of this spectacular Sin City. Drivers will take on over a mile of the Las Vegas Strip, racing flat out past all the glamour and glitz it has to offer. Formula One's highest speed street circuit promises incredible action up and down the Las Vegas Strip. Racing at night means track temperatures will be lower, so data from Free Practice 2 could be crucial to managing both qualifying and the Grand Prix. It's Alpha Tauri at the top of the constructor standings, and with round 22 underway, there are only a handful of points left to claim in this season. That's all here. Now back to the action. All right, so Ollie's going in the car tonight. I'm going to run him on a set of softs. Uh, Vegas is 16 laps. There we go.
Uh, in fact, let's put Ollie in Oscar's car tonight. Because Mix Engine is starting to wear a little bit more than I would like. Um, he's down to 68%, so he's going to be not quick tonight. Um, we want to... Uh, the engine itself is going to be affected, but I don't want to wear out any other parts as well in the process. Uh, and we want to make sure that uh, Mick gets plenty of time on track because we are taking Mick with us to Ferrari. And maybe Ollie, if we can. Uh, we're going to leave Oscar here in hopefully what will be the best car to defend his title against, well, it won't be us, but against Red Bull. Uh, let's see. For a setup, let's go with a 1, a 10.5 a 1.9, a 2.95, and a 0.65. Okay. So we'll put Ollie into Oscar's car tonight. Champion can sit out FP1. And let's go with a 0.5, a 10.5, a 1.9, 3.2 and a 1. There we go. Swap out the parts. Uh, put that engine, I think. Go with that ERS. And we'll go with that gearbox. Okay. Uh, car setup's done, run plan is done. Tires are done. Set them out. So we do have a little bit of Formula One news to talk about, and that is a story that I didn't see until right after I finished streaming last night, and that's Fernando Alonso has now signed a new multi-year extension to his deal at Aston Martin, thus taking himself out of the uh, equation for uh, city season in the driver market. Uh, he will be uh, staying until at least 2026 or the end of 2025. So he'll be racing um, it's I mean they've, they, it's supposedly a two year deal, but I mean the way it's been worded as a multi year deal, I think um, I think he's gonna have an option in his contract to leave if the team really botches the regulations in 2026 I think he'll be able to leave at the end of that season uh, with an escape clause uh, I think there may also be um, a pickup option uh, to extend him for another year um, on Aston's side at the end of 2026 if they want to that's my interpretation of it being a multi-year deal rather than just saying He's extended his contract for another two years. Um, be interesting to see what happens when you look at the options available. Mercedes was never really, I don't think, a serious consideration, especially considering that they just don't seem to have a good car at the moment. There's no guarantees they're going to have a, a strong competitive car next season. And, you know, Kimi Antonelli is definitely going to be in a Mercedes, if not next season, then within a season or two after that. Uh, so if Alonso went to Mercedes, there's no guarantee he'd have a car that could actually be any better than the one he's in right now. And he would effectively be just warming the seat for Kimi Antonelli. There would be no long-term security there for him at all. 
So that kind of rules them out. And the fact that he has declared this early to me suggests that Red Bull have shut the door on him and said, mm, we don't want you. So... It kind of leaves just that, just that decision, really, of, of staying with Aston Martin. I mean, why go somewhere else? Why not just stay with a team that has been built around you? you know, it doesn't make any sense for him to move on. Uh, let me see. Let's try the one. No, let's try zero. Uh, a 3.05 might not be enough. Let's try that. That could do it. We'll leave Schumacher out until he finishes the run. But uh, big changes needed for his setup. It's 79% and good. So, do I go with a 10 or an 11? I'm going to go with a 10 on the rear wing. A 0, a 10, a 1, 9, a 3, and a 0.8. That will not do it. So, let's go with an 11, a 2, 8. 2.75 and a zero and that could do it I want to make sure we get the cars 100% if at all possible tonight given that we are going to be fighting from the back we're going to need to really uh, maximize our driver's confidence level they should hopefully be in peak a fair bit I'm hoping that we can get some good overtakes in consistently moving up through the order so that by the time we get to um, the late stage of the race we can be in a position to score solid points maybe get on the podium potentially if we're really lucky maybe even win the race uh, if we get a safety car that could make things very interesting a red flag would certainly uh, shake things up probably going to two stop tonight Just not sure if I want to start on the mediums or the softs. What do you think? All right, 93%. That is definitely an improvement. It's not quite enough. We can make a few more changes. So the toe is wrong. So. I don't think it's going to be all the way there, but that is the edge of the bracket there. So 
at the very least, we will eliminate 0.45 uh, from the uh, from the marker there, and we can just push it forward. You know, increase the toe, uh, knowing that it can't go any any lower if it isn't right. Helps us narrow down exactly where it needs to be if it's not actually correct. And that'll be Oscar's job when he gets back in the car in FP2. 97% for mix, so we've made big improvements there. Just need a little bit of tweaking. Copy that. And it's just a shame that Mick doesn't have uh, a good engine. I might just buy him a new engine tonight. For the last two races, I don't know. I mean, we're already going to break the cost cap. I've got so much money. Let's do it. Let's just buy him a new engine. He's going to be starting at the back anyway, so... Uh, oh, penalties for Gasly, Albon and Sainz tonight. And Magnussen. So it looks like there'll be a few cars maybe running new engines or new engine parts. All right. What do we need to change on Mick? It is the cornering. Push that up. And that should hopefully be all we need to do. Uh, we're going to run him for 25. 24 laps. There we go. We'll run him on the mediums. Uh, Oscar, we're going to run on the mediums as well, just in case we need to call him in. But we'll try and run him for the full session. Everything's fine, Mick. It's all part of the plan. Ninety-nine percent. Just one little clicker toe needed, and we know which way that has to go because we set the car up in a very specific way. Ninety-nine with Mick as well, so very close. Yeah. 
feeling I just overcorrected that toe slightly. I was like, mm, do I move it one back? And I'm like, no, I'll go with the two clicks. Should have gone with the one. Max is way off the pace. Why is that? Do one thirty six nines on softs. What has happened to Max's pace? to do a little bit of investigation at the end of this session see where everybody sits well, there we go it's a bit of a quicker time for Max are you fighting with anyone? oh he's in still a long way off the pace though See if he pops out for a quick blast for a couple of laps. Doesn't look like he's going to. An excellent session. Let's take a look at the data view. Russell could be a threat tonight. Perez, maybe. If a Ferrari really has turned a corner. Uh, Norris has got a pretty decent looking car. Ocon doesn't. Max's car is distinctly underpowered at 53%. Ah, that's why Leclerc's quick. He's got a new engine in the car this weekend. Uh, right. Valtteri. New ERS. Decent engine. Joe is going to lack a little bit of pace in the engine department. Sainz with a new engine. Albon with a newish engine and a new ERS. Damaged gearbox, so that will hurt him, especially here. Uh, new engine, new ERS for Magnussen. He could be quick. Giovinazzi, we know he's going to be quick. Maloney's got a bad engine. Porsche, very average. Hajar, decent. Average for the sure. That's about to tick over into the yellow on the engine. Stroll in bad shape. Bad gearbox, bad engine. Gasly, bad gearbox. That's going to hurt him. Yeah. Okay, so Leclerc is going to be the big threat tonight with that new engine in his car. He is the one we're going to be uh, chasing down for the win by the look of it. Right, into the final session. Mick. 
Okay, send them out. Keep an eye on tyres, see who goes top of the boards. At the moment, it is Giovinazzi. Oof. Very quick. How much faster is he? Leclerc has gone out there on mediums. Let's see how quick he is on the mediums. And we'll see how Max stacks up on the same tyre. Six tenths of a second quicker. Oh, Leclerc suddenly goes top. I think he got a slipstream on that lap. Yeah, he did. Look, he's tucked up right behind Stroll. Let us know your comments. Both cars at 100%. Excellent stuff. So, Leclerc on a decent run on the mediums is about six tenths. No, about three tenths off the pace of some of the soft runners, which is pretty damn quick. Max, a long way off. And there's Magnussen up there as well. That's a clean air run on hard tyres. Wow. His pace has slowed down again. Maybe he got a slipstream when he set that time. There's some very quick cars tonight. Definitely going to have to watch out for the two Williams cars, Magnussen uh, and Giovinazzi. Going to have to watch out for Russell, but I think Leclerc is going to be setting the pace. Expect him to start on pole position. Or at least the front row. We are done with practice. Just got to wait out the clock. And then skip quali. go perfect and Mick will have that brand new engine as well we're moving on now to the all-important qualifying session 
Qualifying is when F1's most glamorous street circuit really comes into its own. With cars on full throttle down a huge section of the Las Vegas Strip. Getting tyres into the optimal temperature range will be crucial to setting a good time here. So as we head into this qualifying session, Karun, how do you think Lando's going to be feeling? They said a great lap in practice, so you can only imagine how good they're feeling going into qualifying. But the big question is, will they be able to keep this performance up? What does today have in store? Only time will tell. See McKelly there desperately trying to spray a go faster stripes onto the back of that McLaren so it goes a little bit quicker. Don't think it works that way, so. Right, let's put in the parts. The brand new engine for Mick. 71% ERS, and we'll give him his last gearbox as well. Tim done, and for Oscar. 84% engine, 82% ERS, and an 87% gearbox. There we go. Right, we are ready to then sit in the garage for a bit. So Max goes up to third behind Russell and Magnuson. Hajar and Stroll go up to the first and second now. And then Leclerc blitzes the field by going an extra two tenths quicker than everybody else. Let's see just how much pace is in that car. And also, only three drivers uh, contending to avoid elimination tonight because we're obviously sitting out. Uh, Giovinazzi is on a flying lap. He's not had a great first run. If he's all the way down in 16th, he should improve. On a flying lap right now, let's hope for his sake he doesn't hit traffic. Hope for our sake he does. That's it, his lap's ruined. Yep, Joe Lassie's out. Ocon tucked him behind a Ferrari here, so he's going to get a nice little tow. He should get out of the session. What about Vashaw? Norris is in trouble.
Norris improves his time, but not his position. Ocon has got a mighty slipstream here. Oh, it's not a Ferrari he's on the back of. It's... Uh, it's not for sure. It's Hajar. Hajar's quick anyway, so this could still be mighty for Ocon. He's going to knock out his teammate here, I'm sure of it. Here comes for sure up to the line. Can he improve? He can, so Norris is out. Can Ocon knock out for sure? Yes, he can. So, for sure, knocks out a McLaren and then gets knocked out by the other McLaren. We are going to lose Richard Bashaw, Norris, and surprisingly, although we saw him getting really badly blocked at the end of his second run there, Giovinazzi as well. Meanwhile, at the front, it is Leclerc, Magnussen, Russell, and Hajar. Verstappen down in sixth. And that's all we're going to see of qualifying. Then now generate the uh, remaining results. We are starting at the back. Pending penalties. Magnussen is going to be uh, taking penalties. Sainz and Gasly. And Albon as well. And there we see. This is the actual running order. So uh, Max actually had it on pole. Just... Uh, from Leclerc. Sainz in fourth, but with a penalty. Albon in fifth with a penalty. Magnussen in sixth. Gasly in eighth. Penalties for them as well. We should theoretically be starting at the back, but it all depends on what the prop their penalties are for the others. Mick will be getting a penalty tonight uh, and starting at the, at the very back. Evening, Sidhu. Well, there's nothing quite like it. Welcome along to race day. Las Vegas is a super fast street circuit, and the long straight along the dazzling strip could be a tempting and yet challenging place to try and overtake. The sky tonight is mostly clear, with only a few clouds. Nothing to worry about for now, but let's see how the situation unfolds. Well, we'll find out who's shining as bright as the lights of Sin City now. It's the Las Vegas Grand Prix. So we are taking on a position gain tonight. Uh, we are going to predict that Schumacher gets up to eighth. And Piastri gets up to let's do it that way. Sixth and seventh is where we're going to aim with our position gain tonight. That'll uh, almost completely eradicate the uh, five million that we spent on a new engine for Mick, which doesn't seem to penalise him for, but maybe that's because he didn't actually run the car at all in qualifying. Uh, so... We'll see... We are going to go medium, soft, soft, and we are going to push the mediums. Like so. Even if a breeze. All right, cars are set. Uh, we're going to put in two extra laps of fuel to really attack the braking in the opening stint. Uh, we're going to save the battery. 
until uh, the cars in front of us have burnt theirs out. And let's see, can we pull off the position gain? Uh, can we even get on the podium? Can we even win tonight from the back of the grid? Let's see as we send them to the grid for the Las Vegas Grand Prix. The city of Las Vegas is a buzz with excitement as our race draws ever closer. And for that man, Mick Schumacher, this could be an interesting race. At the back of the grid, picking up the rear in P20. Surely it's too much to expect them to produce anything from there. But remember, anything can happen in Formula One. We're all ready to go in Las Vegas. It's lights out, and away we go. You can do it. Yeah, Need to defend that. Cut it. Right, head down. We'll leave you to it. Cut it. Keep pushing. You know what to do. Cut it. So Oscar has jumped somebody off the line. Let's see. Uh, stroll on the hard tyres. Got uh, Hajar, Paris, Sainz, and Maloney starting on soft. Everybody else is on mediums. Letting Mick through. Mick with the better engine tonight. Potentially going to be the quicker car and also is higher up in the position gain. So we want him to uh, finish ahead of Oscar tonight. Close Oscar back up onto uh, onto the back of Mick. Russell has got past Charles Leclerc into second place. Both of our drivers back together again. Now we can get ready to start punching forward a little bit. Time to start making some moves. Overtake is available. Copy. Use energy. Copy.
That's not going to get the move done. Actually, let's uh, turn that off for now. No, we'll leave it on for now. We don't want our teams, teammates fighting amongst each other yet. We'll turn it off when they get into clean air so that they can try and slingshot past each other to speed up our movement through the field. Evening, Derek. Evening, Anthony. Oh, come on, Mick. Don't do these half-assed overtakes. Oh, that's it. You killed your chance. Why is Mick also taking this challenge? Uh, we've paid for a new engine, so we're doing a last to first challenge with both cars and a position gain to try and claw back most of the money we spent on those new engines. And also, it's more challenging if it's both cars trying to fight through. And that, Anthony, is why we're at the back of the grid, because we're doing a last to first challenge tonight. We've got a gap opening up now for Shaw and Norris scrapping away. They're dropping away from the Maloney in front. This will potentially open up a, an opportunity for us. Problem is, Giovinazzi's car is pretty quick. It's making it hard to get past him. And Mick is not committing to uh, full overtakes at the moment, which is a little annoying. Might well be that we just have to undercut and uh, see what we can do from there. And there we go, Vashore now dropping behind Giovinazzi. So hopefully we can pick Vashore off. to say I'm a little disappointed that we're six laps in now we're on lap six and we still haven't moved up it's not uh, it doesn't bode well for the rest of the race if it's taking us this long to move up one place go muscle our way through so let's cool the car now Come on. 
about looking after this tyre where we need to. Just recharge on, please. And that puts Mick in a much better position, confidence-wise. Recharge on, please. Recharge on. Copy. We need to focus on the energy now. Copy. Norris immediately feeling the uh, need to go defensive. And he ends up slipping the car up the inside of uh, Giovinazzi there, who's fighting him off. And energy is available. Yep, cover. Mick is suddenly looking a lot racier. Now that he's got a bit of extra confidence under his belt. I need to start moving Oscar up as well. Schumacher all over the back of uh, Stroll in front. Keep the pressure on. Pull out to take some air on the straight. Yep. There we go, muscle our way through. Some more battery back in the car and uh, go again. Stroll should hopefully be relatively easy to get past because he's on those hard tyres. So if we can just pick the right spot, we should be able to breeze past him. There we go. Oh, look at that. It's a two car overtake. Beautiful stuff from Schumacher. Take a bow, son. That was glorious. Right then, we can take a look now. So we're heading now into turn five. There's the opening. A that is uh, there to move supreme the confidence on braking there.
take some free air. Be brave on the brakes, be brave on the brakes. Beautiful, beautiful. We've got no energy, no energy. Copy. No more DRS. Focus on bringing the pack back up. Copy. Madison's all the way down in 12th. I'm surprised by that. I thought he'd be a little further up. Yeah, but Nancy's made some good progress. Can we uh, dive bomb stroll? Well, not, not this time. Let's go and get him. There's definitely a gap opened up between Gasly and Magnussen. We want to see if we can exploit that. Right, we're going to need to charge up for a little while, I think. Just don't quite have enough. Punch through two cars at once. We can just focus on charging the pack. Yeah. Yeah, use the free air. Yeah. There is the lunge from Oscar. Hits him up to 17th. Giovinazzi is past Gasly. Gasly should be easy to overtake. Well, Magnussen jumping two places there, got past Ocon and Albon. Good move. Getting close to the pit window. Schumacher lunges up the inside of Gasly there. Beautiful stuff. Right, we're down at turn five. It's there for the taking. Very opportunistic overtake there from Schumacher. And up into 14th they go. And now we'll try again, We're punching through. Go get it. Mm -hmm. 
See, our tyre's definitely in rougher shape than the cars that we're chasing, but that's fine because we're undercutting anyway. quite get past Maloney there. Schumacher's through. Going straight on the attack. And he's up to 12th. To recharge on, please. And we finally got past Maloney. Carpex get past Gasly though. So now we're starting to make the progress that I wanted to see us make. There's a big gap opening up behind uh, Sainz. It's a great uh, a breakaway group of the front seven. Leclerc, Hajar, Russell, Verstappen, Perez, Bottas and Sainz. And then nearly five seconds back to Magnussen, who is ahead of this little train that we're in now. Oscar got nailed by Maloney. Be able to take a look here. So we're heading now into turn five. The opportunity's there. Yeah, that's the same opportunistic move that Schumacher pulled off a moment ago. That's a shame. What happened in quali? Uh, we sat out Cloud because uh, we're doing a last to first challenge, so we didn't even compete. We just sat in the garage. focus on the energy now.
pull the car. Come on, you can go to the other side of him. Finally, Jesus. We are definitely losing time stuck at the back of the grid here in this train. We fought our way almost to the front of it, but we've lost so much time, especially in those first six laps where we just didn't move up at all, that uh, we really need a solid stint on the, uh, on the softs next to uh, start hunting down these gaps and gain track position before everyone else starts boxing as well. I'm expecting a lot of one-stops from the AI tonight. Charge, please. There we go, that's Mick into the pits. Ajar is in on softs, Maloney's coming in on his softs. Point one. That's a terrible stop. We held position against uh, Maloney, but yeah, terrible, terrible stop. Should have a clear track on pit exit. Okay, recharge on, recharge on. Now we're going to peel Oscar into the pits. Copy. It's a much better stop. 2.2 seconds. He's going to get out comfortably ahead of Mick. There we go. Now we want our drivers to start uh, leapfrogging each other on the main straight. Slow 
bring the pack up. Charging a pack. Recharge on. How many extra laps of fuel do I recommend in Bahrain? Um, if you've got a, a, a car that's not the quickest, two or three laps because you'll burn through the extra fuel really quickly at Bahrain. Uh, if you've got a very, very quick car, I would say under fuel by two laps. You'll get a, an excellent launch off the line, and then you know you can save a bit of fuel. If there's a safety car or a VSC, that's another opportunity to save fuel very quickly as well, giving you the ability to push again later. But you know, if you've got a very, very quick car, you don't need to overfuel. Overfueling is really if you're trying to punch your way through quickly by going late in the braking or um, if you haven't got the quickest car and you want to try and make up positions by doing that. But it makes you heavier, which makes you slower off the line, slower out of the corners. It's Yeah, if you've got the second fastest car, uh, I would say maybe under fuel by one lap. Give you a little bit of a, a boost off the line. Charge on, recharge on. But not put you on the back foot with a lot of uh, refueling. So we're doing 137s, we are lapping quicker than the cars that we're chasing, which is excellent stuff. We need to focus on getting the pack up. Copy. Safe fuel, safe fuel. We are closing on the cars in front by a, over a second a lap. The size is boxed. Yeah, size is boxed for hards. Hajar's on hards, who we are hunting down. Jar was in that breakaway group at the front, don't forget. So the fact that we are only seven seconds behind him means we've gained three or four seconds on the uh, cars that we were fighting with. Recharge back on, please. Recharge on. Copy. Perez into the pits. That's hard tyres for Perez. And he comes out behind Stroll, just in front of Sainz. And there is Hajar. So again, we have made up ground on the cars that we were fighting against. or, you know, hunting down that breakaway pack that was about 10 seconds clear of us. Charge is good. Coming. Trouble is, they're now starting to form a train of their own. Perez, Sainz, for short, Hajar, all together on the track. It's going to make them a little bit trickier to pick off. The 
use energy. Yeah, copy. We need some PU cooling. Copy. And we're going to use Oscar to try and push the pace a little bit. Two Red Bulls are both in. Oh, and they're double stacking. Hard tyres on both. And that's hurting Leclerc. That's a slow stop as well. Leclerc's going to come out right in front of us. ground now because we're stuck behind a slow Charles Leclerc. We need to get him quickly. Okay, we got him. Had to get that move done before the end of the lap. We need to focus on the energy now. Let's go recharge on, please recharge on. Yeah, go. Let's think about looking after this tire where we need to. Oh, Christ. Now we're stuck behind Valtteri. Come on. Copy. Back off. We need to do what we can to recharge the battery. Copy.
call the car. Copy. Right, Russell boxes from the lead. And so do Porsche and uh, Giovinazzi as well. Norris and Gasly are in. That's going to clear two cars out of the way of us. Russell's had an issue in the pits. So it's George Russell who pits. However, they can't seem to jack the car up. And we get past Russell. Excellent news. Okay, so Norris stopped. Schumacher's right behind him. Gets the move done. Let's pick our pace up, let's go. We'll just take it easy off the straight. Eden refill. Recharge on. It's gone a little bit wrong for Mick. Got caught up a couple of times with some really dodgy traffic. Use energy. We're going to continue to push Oscar forward. Hopefully they can come back together again around the pit stop. That's 33. is just dropping off it's not good it's getting back onto russell who's pushed really hard uh i will be continuing on monday then taking a day off uh or two days off and we'll start season six 
and our first season with Ferrari on uh, Thursday. All right, so we're up near the front, but we do have another stop to make. Okay, recharge on, recharge on. So we're going to have to make all this ground back up again. Hopefully we'll have enough pace to do that. Oh yeah, I'm replacing Perez, and replacing Perez as soon as we're done with Abu Dhabi with Mick, we'll move Mick over to uh, the Ferrari, hopefully. We're going to have to be very clever with how we do it, because there's a chance that Ferrari might not sign him. So if that happens, we'll just have to uh, reload. We want to try and engineer that move so that he's there in position for us when we get into that team. off the pace at the moment with Mick. All right, let's start prepping him again. Russell is absolutely flying. We knew Russell was going to be quick tonight. windows open up next lap no more lift coast required <laughs> once again Mick is just dropping off the back as everyone else around us is starting to push use energy no saving required <laughs> Max just gets gobbled up there. Perez, Sajar and Piastri all got past him. Go, we jink our way through. We can just focus on charging the pack. Lift and coast 12. Lift and coast required. Yeah, copy. So recharge on.
Have I seen the 2025 calendar? Uh, no, I generally don't tend to look at the calendars too much until they've been confirmed. It's a bit early for next year's calendar to be officially confirmed yet. Evening, Serrata. Long time no see. What drivers am I thinking? Um, uh, we're going to have uh, Schumacher at Ferrari and probably stick with George, but I, I want to try and bring Ollie Behrman across. If I can't get him in as a reserve, then I will replace George, I think, if I can afford to replace George and stick Ollie in as, as the uh, second driver at Ferrari. Australia's the season opener. Oh, thank God, we're starting the season with Australia. I'd heard rumours that Australia was going to move around a bit. Um, a couple of, I think, last beginning of last season, I'd heard rumours that Australia would, would bounce around and would sometimes start, sometimes not. But, uh, yeah, I used to really enjoy Australia being the opening race of the season. So I'm glad that's back as the first race. Slow up this group now. Push the tires now. Energy available. Box, box, box. box. Let's have a good stop this time, please, boys. Better. Not great, but better. And we got out just in front of a huge gaggle of cars. That was vital. No lift and coast required from our side at the moment. Oscar hopefully will frustrate everybody here. Need to focus on getting the pack up. We need 
left and coast, please. Uh, it looks like one car got through. But we definitely slowed that pack down a little bit. Point four, not bad. And Oscar comes out right in front of Schumacher. out quite nicely we've only got two breakaway cars in front that are close then we've got a little bit of a gap from Magnuson to the pack that we've got to chase down so we are 19 seconds behind at the moment that's not too bad we should hopefully have enough pace to make that up I'm in driving clean air. No wonder Mick was compromised. Australia, China, Japan, Bahrain, Saudi, Miami, Imola, Monaco, Spain, Canada, Austria, Spa, Hungary, Hungary, Zamports. Monza, Baku, Singapore, Kota, Mexico, Brazil, Vegas, Qatar. Yeah. Interesting. Oscar blitzes through on his way to do a fastest lap attempt. Sweet. You did a good job. And we got it without even trying on that lap. Oscar absolutely flying onto the back of Magnuson. It 
use the free air. Yeah, take it easy. And there we go, Oscar up to eighth place. Passing Norris as well. We need to focus on the energy now. Big lift now. One thirty five seven. We did a one thirty four nine. That should be safe. So, let's remind ourselves of the position guarantee that we made. That Schumacher would finish 6th, Oscar would finish 7th. That's a tall order now. Like on 7th and 8th, that would be tricky, but we could do that one, I think. But let's slow down Magnuson a bit try and let Mick catch up because Mick's got no battery to push with and it's a little uh, well actually he's okay on tyres give him a little bit more tyre come on um here's a little bit of battery There, you're almost there. Dragging Norris along with us. Tire situation. Nick is so close. He's not going to get it this lap. He'll get it at the start of the next one. Closing in on science. Gaps now down to 5.7 seconds. We do need to find more pace. Bye, mate. Recharge on. 
No saving required. We could just focus on charging the pack. And there we go, we got Mick in position. Okay, we need some more lift and coast, please, and a bit more in each zone. Okay, mate, let's try and protect the tyre. Bring the pack up. Copy. Back off. And we've dropped Norris in the process as well. required. Let's pick our face up, let's go. Ten laps to go. Gap is coming down. Not enough though to uh, to Valtteri. Front group's pace is pretty mighty at the moment. Okay, recharge on. Need to focus on getting the pack up. All right, now we can use Oscar to start pushing that pace again. Oh, Russell and Verstappen have broken away, so we're not going to win this race tonight. Podium is probably a little unlikely as well, but we can still try and get this uh, position gain done. Okay, mate, good job. No more lift and coast required. Recharge on. And we go up to seventh place. Four seconds off the back of Hajar, who's dropped away. Recharge on, please. Recharge on. We're good to push on the tyres. Slightly bigger lift and coast in all areas, please. Overtake is available. Go for the dive bomb. 
Ah, couldn't because uh, Magnuson had a little look. <laughs> we will just fly up the inside there. Beautiful stuff. lift off there unfortunately and now we're boxed in come on Piastri has caught yeah, Hajar already. Back off in the high speed. Can we do lift and coast? Yeah, Hajar's pace is terrible now that he's dropped off that group. His tyres aren't great, that's probably why. Push the tyres. Energy is available. Oh, they ask you. Oh, sorry about that. Recharge on. No more lifting coast. Right, so we've got our cars into six and seventh, which is what we need. Now we need to make sure that they're the other way around at the end of the race. But I'm not giving up hope that we can close up to the cars in front. More lift and coast, please, each zone. So we're 4.3 seconds off. Five laps to go. Five laps to go. Can we close that four second gap? We're certainly going to try.
Oh, if only we'd be able to make a bit of progress right from the very beginning. Things could be very different. Perez has been pushing the uh, pace. Bottas is on the podium. What the hell? Yeah, that you know, they've been pushing the pace in that little chasing group to catch the front two. Which has made it harder for us to catch up. But we are catching up. Down to 3.7. Going up again now because uh, Oscar doesn't have DRS. There they are. They're not far in front of us. Big lift now. Four to go. is now three seconds Use energy. Push, push. oh crap oh mix it back in mix back in thank god for that side at the moment. Let's push, come on. Two seconds the gap. Are we actually in contention for a podium here? Charging a pack. Pull the car. Make. Like the overtake. <laughs>
leave that gap down. Work on your PU cord. <laughs> Not today, Valtteri. Sweet. You did a good job. Oh, go on, Oscar. Get that slingshot. Beautiful. Gives the slingshot to Mick. Nearly gone inside the Ferrari. Okay, last lap. And energy is available. available. Oscar gets past the Ferrari, but doesn't have any battery left. Ah, it's going to be sixth place for Oscar. But it is a podium for Schumacher. Woo. We complete the first to last challenge. Well, for the back of the grid to see how far we can get up the field challenge. We completed our position game with Mick finishing no lower than sixth. Oscar finishing no lower than seventh. And Russell took the win to take points for more points away from Max. That was uh, that was a hell of a race. I said if we had just a couple more laps, I mean, also we absolutely shredded the tires at the end. But if we if those first six laps where we just stopped going nowhere, if we'd made positions up in those first six laps, we might have won that race. Mick Schumacher's drive, definitely worthy of praise today. Definitely a well-deserved podium. You've got to say their race strategy was very good indeed. The team has been waiting patiently there, and you can see just how much it means to each and every one of them. Well, his dad stood on the podium many, many times, and Mick Schumacher has proven he's got every right to be there too. No stranger to the podium at all, that's for certain. This is the kind of consistency every driver wants to have. And there's not much that rivals the Las Vegas Grand Prix when it comes to the podium presentation. And there's a little glimpse of uh, potential teammates for next season. Garage, what would they be making of that race, do you think? They'd certainly be pleased to have made the podium. A job well done, for sure. Well, everyone, that's all from us here in Las Vegas. Formula One has almost reached its conclusion this year. Meet us next time in Abu Dhabi, between the desert and the sea, for an enthralling finale. So confirmation of the final result, George Russell gaining two places starting third wins the Grand Prix it is second place for Max dropping from pole Mick Schumacher up 17 places to finish in third 
uh, ahead of Charles Leclerc and Sergio Perez. Oscar up 13 places to finish in sixth place and tag the fastest lap for us as well. Bottas managing to hang on for uh, points in seventh place. Much needed points for McLaren. That is nearly double the points that they had going into this Grand Prix. Uh, Magnussen of five places to score another four points for Williams. Hajar gets a couple of places, uh, a couple of points for Alfa Romeo in their fight with Haas. And Norris up seven places to take the final point for McLaren. Let's have a look at the bottom half. Uh, disappointing race for Sainz. Giovinazzi, surprised he only gained six places. Thought he might do a little bit better than that today, but uh, a good running for him. Porsche in 13th ahead of Albon and Gasly. Uh, Ocon down eight places, as was Joe. For sure down a couple of places. Lance Stroll all the way down nine places to finish 19th. And Maloney, the last of the runners, down in 20th, dropping six places from where he started. Let's take a look at the uh, driver's standings going into one last race. There you see uh, 449 points, just the nine points for Oscar tonight, but he's already champion. It doesn't really matter too much. Mick gets 15 points, 338 points. He is nine points, no, 11 points ahead of Max Verstappen with one round to go. Uh, so it's not mathematically um, you know, certain that he will finish in second, but that's a nice, healthy little lead to have going into the final Grand Prix. Uh, Leclerc in fourth is now guaranteed to finish in fourth place. Uh, George Russell is guaranteed to finish in fifth, uh, despite his heroics today. Uh, Stroll and Gasly uh, are going to stay sixth and seventh. Uh, Norris up an extra point, securing potentially eighth. He's now 16 points clear of Sainz. Uh, so it's unlikely Sainz will score enough points to topple Lando. Perez in 10th with 10 points tonight. Has he secured 10th spot? He has unlikely Albon's going to catch him and he's in with half a shout of maybe getting out of Carlos Sainz in his final race for Ferrari before we boot him out uh, Ocon stays 12th uh, Magnussen in 13th now just a point behind with his uh, four points earned today uh, Hajar closes to within two of Theo Porsche that's an interesting battle that's been going on with those two this year and there you see Valtteri Bottas lifting himself off the bottom of the standings. Six points there, taking Mercedes finally into double digits. See the constructor standing. 787 for us. Uh, we earned 24. Red Bull in second uh, with an extra 30 points. Ferrari jump above Aston Martin. They scored 35 points today with no reply from Aston. The so Ferrari might end up finishing third after all. They've got a 10-point lead going into Abu Dhabi. That is certainly going to stand him in good stead, especially if George can have another good race. Uh, Alpine in fifth, lose a little bit of ground again to McLaren. There's just two points between those two teams in the battle for fifth place. Uh, Williams in seventh are now 23 points clear, so they're pretty much confirmed now in seventh. Haas are now only four points ahead of Alfa Romeo. That is definitely a fight to keep an eye on in the... Uh, final standings and Abu Dhabi there you see uh, Mercedes with those extra six points hit double digits but uh, they are staying bottom as far as pit stops tonight a 2.2 second stop for uh, Oscar was the quickest stop ahead of Verstappen Ocon and then Schumacher so we outscore Red Bull mightily because Leclerc's not even on the page uh, two finishes for Aston they haven't had scored any points there for a while uh, let's see, no points for Williams, still no points for Alfa, uh, Romeo or Haas. Standings look like this, 737 points. Uh, we are now uh, confirmed as pit stop champions for, next, for this season. So we have won this competition four times in our five years here and came second in the year that we didn't win it. Uh, we really have managed our pit crew superbly. Uh, Ferrari are confirmed in third place. They're not going to catch Red Bull. They're not going to be caught by uh, McLaren. McLaren confirmed in fourth place. Mercedes are eight points ahead of Alpine. That is still up for grabs to see who finishes fifth in this competition. Um, prize money is certainly going to be a thing. Uh, let's see. Aston Martin confirmed in seventh. 
Williams in eighth. It's still open. You never know. Alpha or Haas could pull something out of the back. Well, Alpha might pull something out of the back. I can't see Haas doing it uh, in the final Grand Prix of the season. Uh, let's have a look at the driver report cards. There's going to be a lot of overtakes to have a look at here. Mick, 22 and 17 in overtakes, 17 and 5 in defense. Excellent race for him. Let's have a look at Oscar. 29 and 15 and 14 and 12. Uh, very, very good race for both our drivers there. And of course, we did also get a little bit of extra experience for Ollie, helping boost him ready for next season. As far as the sponsors go, well, we paid 5 million to put a new engine in Mick's car. Cost can't be damned. And uh, let's see, uh, we hit the fi finish position streak. Uh, so that's nice. We got the fastest lap. Obviously, we didn't qualify, so we didn't get the qualifying there. We did complete the position gain. Uh, that's an extra 3.9 million there. And uh, we got the finish position as well. So we actually uh, covered off just about the cost of the engine. We dropped maybe 400 grand, if that on our best sponsor base rate not bad at all not bad at all so we have just one race to go nothing to play for we have won all the championships now the drivers the constructors and the pit stop challenge as we go into the final race of the season uh, and then there'll be some little jiggery pokery hocus pocus you know, uh, tinkering uh, and finagling of stuff going on in the background after Abu Dhabi to try and engineer Mick into a Ferrari. Uh, obviously, Perez is out of contract at the end of the season. If we wait till the end of the season and just sign Perez, there's every chance that he won't actually complete that move. So what we're going to do is do an immediate transfer and see if Ferrari pick up Mick. They might possibly pick up Sonoda because he is out of contract at the moment, sitting there on the sidelines. Similar rating as well. I think he's either 87 or 88, can't remember. So we might have to do a little bit of uh, saving and reloading and saving and reloading, uh, just to engineer Mick into that seat. But we will be leaving for Ferrari next season. Uh, they are going to be um, potentially third in the constructor standings. Take a look at the regulation changes to see what kind of money we're going to uh, come into next season uh, there'll be no changes so uh, we'll earn 83 million um, in prize money for Ferrari if they hang on to that position it's worth an extra 11 and a half mil if they can finish in third so we definitely want that to happen uh, in terms of hours uh, there will be a reduction in hours um, only three MAU hours available for uh, Alpha, Alpha Tauri next season uh, Red Bull will get 3.6, down from 4.8 this year. Ferrari, if they finish where they are, will be down from 5.1 to 4.2. Aston will be down from 5.1 to 4.8. So part of me wants to finish in fourth, or Ferrari to finish in fourth, so we get a little bit of extra development time next season. But I'm expecting their facilities to be in all sorts of a mess. So uh, the extra prize money will help alleviate some of the financial problems we're going to have getting everything back up to code again next season when we go there uh, and again it'll be the same with wind tunnel testing as well as you can see um it'll be down from 68 to 56 or from 68 to 64 depending on whether they finish third or fourth um so that is how things kind of stand there let's get the cars and everything prepped for tomorrow well not tomorrow uh, the next race on monday uh, let's put in the uh, spare rear wing. Suspension's got one race to go, but it's also got a spare as well. Nothing needs to be fixed on Oscar's car. That's good. Yeah, we are all ready for the final race. Let's check facilities. Yes, it has finally gone down, so we can refurb that. What about their uh, design center? Still hasn't broken. It's going to be very, very close. Hopefully we can get that refurb going through for them before the season finishes. Uh, this is why I haven't really spent any money yet on an upgrade because I want to get uh, driver transfers and stuff out of the way. I may possibly... Um, uh, 
<clears throat> may possibly have to spend a bit of money so we'll get the driver transfer out of the way first and then we'll spend money at the end of the season to put some upgrades on uh, to Alpha Tauri's facilities make sure that they are still the top team next season uh, which they should be we've done a lot of work on the car uh, for next season now, it's already in excellent shape we can kind of get a quick glimpse uh, in fact let's do a quick save and reload uh, actually is there anything about to come through let's have a look no it's all 16 days 31 days it's a way off yet so uh, we'll do that next we'll do that next week then got a cost cap fine because we broken the cost cap with that engine purchase uh, we're going to get a big hefty fine at the end of november and then a big hefty fine at the end of december it's another reason why i've not spent a lot of money yet we've got some scouting results back the helipad refurb is done in time for the final race uh so we've got information on jack crawford the ferrari youngster who is um into average let's have a look at his stats his braking's pretty poor cornering's decent his reactions are always well, cornering's good for a young driver his reactions are decent accuracy control and smoothness are all very good adaptability is poor overtaking is decent defending is decent as well um jack crawford will be moving on next season uh, who else did we scout? Zay Maloney. So he's got 38 months left on his deal at Haas. Uh, let's have a look at how he's... Look at his cornering. He's a 90 in cornering. A 94 in control. A 91 in smoothness. Wow. He really has turned into a good young driver. So... Uh, Anyone who's uh, unsure who to sign uh, when the beginning stages of their career uh, as a manager, as a reserve driver, maybe you want to consider Zay Maloney. He's developed very nicely. Very nicely indeed. Who else do we get? Uh, Hajar has 50 months left. He's on a really long-term deal. Wow, that's, that's uh, just over four years to go on his deal he's a 90 in cornering 81 in breaking 84 in reactions 95 in control his adaptability is not great that needs a lot of work his defending is pretty pretty meh his overtaking is pretty not not too bad uh but yeah he's got some really good stats as well he's turned into a nice young driver uh actually i want to compare him to uh let's compare maloney to ollie bearman so bearman is down in cornering he's up in braking by quite a bit down a little bit in control definitely down in smoothness way up in adaptability overtaking defending need a lot of work his reactions are excellent though his accuracy is better as well so the overtaking and defending is something that could easily be worked on that's not bad. Let's take a look at uh, Isaac. Very similar in age. Cornering, pretty close. Four points difference. Seven points difference in braking. Seven points difference in control. Five difference in smoothness. Huge gap in adaptability. 23 points, although he pulls back 16 in the overtake. Uh, equal on defending. Down six points in reactions. Down a point in accuracy. Very, very closely rated, those two. Yeah, I'd love to get him into the car next season. Basically, Yuki Tsunoda is an 87. So, yeah, there's a good chance we might see him back on the grid. Uh, who is going to be out of contract at the end of this year? Not Max. Charles Leclerc will be out of contract. Where will he go? He won't be going to Ferrari, that's for sure. <laughs> Uh, he won't be going to McLaren. He, oh, God. Can you imagine him going to uh, Aston, replacing Stroll? Stroll getting the seat at Red Bull. That would be crazy. Um, we're going to be buying out the last month of Perez. 
Oh, he's not interested because it's the end of the season. So, ah, uh, we can't do what I was hoping to do. Ah, okay. That complicates things. We're going to have to wait till the very last day of the season before we can do our driver stuff. Uh, Joe is in contract. Oscar's obviously still got a year left. We should probably renew Oscar's contract. Although I don't want to deny him the opportunity of going to Red Bull if they come a calling for him. Valtteri's going to be out of contract. Could be a seat opening up at Mercedes. That would be horrible if Oscar went there. Lose his title before he'd even start the season. Uh, Albon will be out of contract, so there'll be a seat opening up at Alpine. And that's it for main drivers. It's all just reserve drivers from that point on. Uh, yeah, going to be an interesting uh, end of season. Get that preps for the final day and there we go we're all set and ready for Abu Dhabi which will take place on Monday at the usual time 8 o'clock there will be a lot of uh, as I say funky stuff going on on the very last day of the calendar year so that we can try and engineer Mick over to the Ferrari seat um, I do not want to have to buy out the contract of a very expensive driver on day one at Ferrari that's going to eat up our entire budget so uh, yeah we'll see what we can do I'm a little concerned that Ferrari may try and sign um, Leclerc again I hope I kind of hope that uh, Red Bull re-sign him but we'll see what happens but uh, as, as I say yeah we'll be back on Monday to finish the season off at Abu Dhabi and get everything prepped for uh, the start of season six of Hardcore when we transmit uh, translate over to Ferrari. And that will take place on Thursday. There'll be a two day gap. There'll be no stream Tuesday, no stream on Wednesday, uh, or at least not an F1 manager. I might possibly stream something else. I'm not sure yet. I might just uh, take some time for myself. But uh, yeah, hope you join me for the season finale, the end of an era Alpha Tauri on Monday and then we'll see where we go from there but uh, that's it for me thanks for watching I am Jim Bob and I'll be back with more F1 Manager very soon <laughs>